Like keep it real, and stay. I'm flipping keys, no way. Eating good, I got a lot on my plate. But this is what I wanted, so I can't complain. The Minority Reports Podcast, where we keep it real, estate, and entrepreneurship education for the minority of 3% action takers. Here's your host, Billy the Kid, and co host, Dan Delgado. We're back. <laughs> After a little bit of a break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we we took a little break because uh, what's crazy is uh, some of the episodes we do literally like one day and then the next day we'll do the next one. So we have like the next two weeks. Um, but no, we're we're here to stay. So 15 episodes in, man. This is what, number 16? Huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we need I didn't a think bit about of a break. that. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. And we're, we've been talking about uh, we're going to change up a few things, obviously, all for the better. So we're, we're excited. We're just talking about. Well, we'll probably we'll lay it out later and more in uh, formal, but uh, we're looking at just in the future, we're going to do some Zoom stuff, too, um, not just locally, but that way we can tap in. We could do international stuff at that point, you know. Yeah. So, it, so yeah, we'll we'll get more. We'll give you guys more detail once that comes. But it's cool how you got there, bro. Huh? It's a cool hat you got there. Oh yeah, man! Thanks, I appreciate it. Actually, uh, no, yeah. why are you talking some, about some, oh, we some talking weirdo? About some weirdo <laughs> dropped it off of my house. <laughs> no, I appreciate it, man. Uh, we were literally. Uh, let's start with that, man. Uh, the undercover billionaire, and I think to the point where I think the next one that we do is going to be a, just summarizing that show we were talking about it. So stay tuned for that episode because there was yeah, some gems if, in that if show. If you haven't watched it, it's on Discovery Plus and it's it's my hero, Grant Cardone. He's on it. And, yeah. Uh, I yeah, I've I just started watching it and I'm I'm like halfway through the season. And, it's, well, it's and like bad. I told you, dude, I, I started it and I binge watched the whole thing. <laughs> two in the morning. I, in like it. two, three days, dude. Like because it's really, you know, it's our topic. Like um, and I remember like the last episode. We were so eager to like see the final that it was like 2 a.m. Uh, the wife had to take a test the next day and <laughs> we shouldn't have done that. But it was like 2 a.m. We were on the TV like, oh, my God, I never watched TV, too. Like that's something mm-hmm. that I kind of ruled out of my life a few years ago when I started focusing on my stuff. And uh, obviously it's all well, for the know, better. But these shows, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, you're literally, dude, I look at it like I took a whole class that week, you know, oh, like, my God, yeah. <laughs> There's so for the many low gems cost of, of the five ninety nine a month for a Discovery <laughs> yeah, Plus. Yeah, dude, seriously, <laughs> yeah. I, that's how I looked at it. I'm like, dude, even if you pay that little bit, like you're paying for this class. Yeah, like, yeah. You're learning, like you're watching these people do this. So, for if you, sure, if you, if, you haven't, if you haven't watched the show, the concept is they take people who are currently millionaires or billionaires, I guess, mm-hmm. and they drop them off uh, anywhere in the country with no money and no resources, and they have to be undercover. They can't be themselves, mm-hmm. and they have to make. Uh, a, a business million. that's worth a million dollars within three months. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> crazy. And so it's insane watching what these people are going yeah. through. But man, it's just like you learn so much. And and not just that, but one one of the biggest things that uh it stuck to me from the beginning was network. Like yeah. obviously when you when they put these people in a random city, they don't have their name to work with. They actually have to lie, which that's that borderline. They're all kind of like, well, I hate this. You know, I'm used to be myself, not lying. But they have to say that their name's whatever else, not their own name. And they start uh their own instagrams or or it's social media so a whole new personality yeah. so it, it it also brought me like i'm like well man like it, i need to be thankful even for the you know the numbers that i'm at i'm like i need to be thankful for that because it's like a network so yep. great show well again i don't want to yeah, talk we'll do too a, much about it a show on it it's pretty cool. yeah, yeah. <laughs> how was your week man um it was, it's been busy man like i said like my day job just they must know that i'm you know, I got ideas and plans and stuff because, man, I keep getting so much work. It's so Everything annoying. happens for a reason, no, bro. No, I know, no. But uh, it's been busy, like I said. Yeah. But uh, yeah, well, you've been some, traveling, too. Yeah, back and forth. We have a plant in Missouri that I have to take care of. And so I'm actually going back and day after tomorrow for yeah. a few days. So. That's awesome, though, man. That's I mean, you can't go wrong with a free What about you? I heard, I heard you had some uh, experience with some building inspectors. Oh, my God, bro. Uh, yeah, I, I think let's save that for once we actually done. <laughs> and we, when we could, uh, we'll we'll do a show where we're, we got something that we're working on and we'll do a whole show summarizing yeah. the whole process. But yeah, uh, there's there's a lot to that. Um, again, we'll we'll save it for that show. Uh, my biggest thing has been um, lately. I've It's weird since I came back from El Salvador, like 
my life has been, I've been literally looking at every point of my life and uh, evaluating and seeing where I want to go next. Um, you know, like spiritually, even, uh, even relationships, like it's one of those where it's like, what, what, you know, what is this relationship doing for me? That's benefiting you, us. You know, before we started recording, you, you were talking about discomfort earlier. Can you talk a little bit more yeah, about yeah, that, yeah. how your attitude has changed about it? Yeah. So, so all that has come into play. It's, uh, it's literally like this ball of emotions, but it's a good thing. It's it, every time I get like this and I feel like this is the next level of my life. Uh, every time, even, you know, before we, we got our, our home and, uh, you know, where I'm living at now, uh, before it was built and everything, like we, we were uncomfortable because it was, you know, doubling our mortgage and, you know, a whole other lifestyle that we weren't, we didn't know what was going to happen. So it was very uncomfortable. Now, so now, now he's got a pool in the back. <laughs> oh my God, bro. That's another, okay. So let me tell you a story about that. So yeah, this week we got a pool in the back. Uh, it's, it's amazing. Uh, it, it hit me when I saw the filters. Cause at first oh, it was kind of, no, it, it, I know, okay. I know, but it hit me. Cause I was like, Damn those okay. filters, man, I made it. I made it. I got them pool filters. <laughs> <laughs> actually bro in my last house i tried buying like a walmart pool yeah i never used anything no filter no chemicals so it turned green within oh, like yeah. two or three yeah, weeks so i made a promise I, and actually i told the wife i'm like i'm never doing this again it's your fault you know because <laughs> she she wanted a she pool so i'm like i'm never doing this again uh but i was like and if we ever do it we have to do it right is what mm -hmm. i told her so anyways yeah it was a mess, bro. Like seeing my yard get hurt like that, that hurt me deep inside because <laughs> I take care of my yard. But no, it's great. Uh, actually, today, so hopefully everything works out. We're we're gonna have some swimming for the first time. Well, the kids got in there yesterday for like fifteen minutes just because they're kids. Definitely. But today we're probably gonna do a quick grill out and stuff. But there's a lot of work still. But the biggest thing was edging around the pool. I just seen my yard all tore up around it. Yeah. So I got the edging done myself, which uh, I did way better than- What'd you uh, use for the edging? Just the interlocks. Okay. Yeah, and then we're gonna throw some rock in there and then pour some, have, have my guys do some concrete and it'll be good. But yeah, it's towards the end of the season, but they, they're so behind that it was one of those where it's like, do it now or you're gonna be waiting again oh, next summer. So yeah. we're gonna enjoy it for the few weeks that are left and then be ready next, uh, Next summer, but yeah, it, it, and uh, you know, it's stuff like that, that even that, the reason why I brought the filter was cause it hit me like, wow, I really have a pool in my backyard. Like I would never, you know what I mean? Like coming where we're coming from, it's like- Have you heard of uh, air filters in your <laughs> HVAC systems? <laughs> no. <laughs> that make you feel proud too? <laughs> yeah. Damn, I got air conditioning. But looking at that bro, I was like, man, this is official. Is what, that's, that's what came to yeah. mind. I'm like, it's official, um, but it's been that uncomfortable, all those stuff and, uh, you know, I was talking and, and, uh, even, even stuff like that, it's like, it's a headache, but like dealing with that whole pool thing was a headache, but it's like, you have to know, like, you have to be thankful about that. You know what I mean? It's like, oh yeah, here I am. Like I'm stressed because I'm getting a pool in my backyard. Like, you know, th those are the reminders that I constantly fight myself to tell myself like, and I, I think yes. it's, it's important to challenge your, your thoughts, mm -hmm. um, because obviously your, your thoughts can become reality. Mm -hmm. And like along the lines, it's crazy that you mentioned discomfort because on the way here, I was, you know, driving with my daughter and there's a conversation that I wanted to have with her. Mm -hmm. And I felt very uncomfortable talking about this with her. And I don't, I won't go into what it was about, yeah, but yeah. it was an uncomfortable topic. And I, I found myself like, cause my plan was to talk to her on the ride. Cause we have a 45 minute ride in the town. It's like, okay, well I'll talk to her on the ride. And then, you know, she always puts her headphones in and just whatever, she's a teenager. And uh, I was just like, I put on like a podcast and then I'm like 10 minutes in, I was like, oh shoot, I'm supposed to talk to her, you know? And I was like, well, I'll just wait till they're done with this segment. And then I was like, well, I'm like, okay, I'm clearly, I'm pushing it off. Mm -hmm. And so then I like paused it and she still had her headphones in. And so I had to like talk to myself and be like, why does this make me uncomfortable? What is the, the reason for it? Mm -hmm. And how, you know, I need to challenge myself to get out of it. And so then I had her take her earbuds off. And so then we had a conversation that needed yeah, to yeah. be had. And I'm glad we did. Yeah. Um, it went well. And um, so I do think it's so important to uh, get, obviously, if, if people tell you all the time with success, like you have to get out of your comfort zone. Everybody knows that, mm -hmm. but we don't realize that there's little micro oh, yeah. discomforts that we have every day that we keep putting off. And for me personally, like uh, when, as I've been, when we had Doug Fitzgerald on, mm -hmm. um, I met with him later on just, you know, for some coffee and 
for some reason, like I have a really like a mental block with journaling for some reason. And that's kind of something that he told me too, is like, you know, you know, realize what is it that's making you uncomfortable about it? And do you have to do that? Is mm-hmm. there an alternative for that? Mm-hmm. And for me, you know, I kind of think of a journal as like something that I can leave my family to, like when I'm gone, mm-hmm. it's something that they can look back on. Yeah. You can see my thoughts. I love that. I like that. And yeah. so that's kind of how I'm now thinking about it. And I still haven't started it, but like, uh, it's but that's going to be my motivation, yeah, you know, there. because I do want to leave something behind where my kids and my wife or you know my grandkids can just kind of see my thoughts and throughout my whole life. And mm-hmm. if I can stay consistent with it, I think it'd be valuable to my yeah. family. You know? Yeah. So no, yeah. and, and staying, like I said, being uncomfortable, I think that's the, uh, I thought about, and did for, you know, a few years ago, I thought about just writing a book about that. Cause it's a big thing. It's like, uh, and literally uncomfortable will get you comfortable. And once you, once you go that, once you go up that road and you do it, then it's like, okay, you look back and you're like, that oh, I'll that do it again, yeah. I'll do it again, you know, and it's easier. Well, it's so like you, that, you that got, first property, it's the same thing. Yeah. Like it's scary as hell and then you're doing mm-hmm. like, oh, that was, that was fine. Yeah. And then you, you get comfortable. So, but, but that's the, that's the biggest fear of mine is getting comfortable. Cause it's happened to me too, where even after I quit my job and, and it's not like I just let it go and I'm the, you know, I'm a bum and you know, it, it's more like. I get comfortable on that next level. Like, okay, it took a while to get here. Let me enjoy my house. Let me, you know, if, if that was my uncomfortability, is that even a word? I don't know. It sounded good. There you go. Thank you. (laughs) That's a good word right there. (laughs) I invented Um, it. (laughs) But uh, if you get to that level and and it's time to enjoy it, I've also taken time off to a point where it's like, you know what, let me enjoy what we did. But also once you start getting that comfortable, it's scary. So it's time to make yourself uncomfortable. And I think once you do that, you're ready you're climbing levels yeah. to what you're doing so yeah anyways yeah, great, great topic. <laughs> yeah, i know that, that was awesome i love it um, um but we have no a guests. special guest today <laughs> <laughs> two special guests <laughs> no we actually we actually don't have a guest today we we've been talking about it for a few weeks yeah um especially after we had uh one of our guests on about the um money makeover the, the, the total money makeover by dave ramsey and then the differences between that and robert kiyosaki's mm-hmm. rich dad poor dad and how they they these two like financial independence gurus how they have completely different mindsets on reaching financial independence mm-hmm. and um it kind of reminds me because people always compare them which i don't think is necessarily fair because they're so different yeah so when i was a lot younger i used to i used to box on amateur circuit and when I when people would find out I'd do it, they'd be like, oh, well, it's not like you're doing like MMA or blah, blah, blah you know, and I'm like, I'm not trying to do MMA. Like, <laughs> yeah. they're completely different sports. All they do, the only different, the only similarity is that you hit people with it. Yeah. You know? And so I would always get super frustrated. And I've never really been. Because it's two different things. Yeah. And I've never been a fan of MMA, to be honest. Um, so so I kind of feel like it's a little bit of the similar type of it's comparison. It's like soccer and football. Like yeah. Especially, I think, all culture, like we're, you know, they're used to watching soccer. So they look at American football in a certain way. But it's like, if you understand both sports, totally well, different. Well, to, to soccer, football looks like a bunch of animals. But then or, to football, the opposite, soccer like, looks like a bunch soccer, of pussy. They get hurt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get hurt. They're like, oh, what? But basketball is the ultimate <laughs> pussy sport. <laughs> yeah. The foul so, every 10 so, seconds. And, and I think that's that's what people do, man. They like to compare, yeah. you know. But this is, this is a good and the reason yeah. it's a good comparison is because when we had evan on a few weeks ago mm-hmm. he used both methods yeah and so what we want to do this week is actually just talk about uh, summarize each uh methodology i guess however mm-hmm. you want to consider that or yeah what our theory that they have yeah and then we'll we'll each uh describe one and then we'll kind of maybe go over some different scenarios mm-hmm. on when one would be appropriate when the other wouldn't when you can shift from one to the other and what kind of position you'll probably want to yeah. find yourself in before you try to adopt one or the other exactly and there's, there's tons out there but these yeah, are just yeah. like the bigger ones but. exactly and and what we'll do is uh for book of the week we'll kind of summarize it and we'll just do a quick summary because the whole show is going to be about right, right. The, each book basically and each uh each way that they teach their own uh but basically with uh we, we which we've had rich that poor dad uh, yeah it was a book but yeah we'll, it's we'll a classic and j- just to summarize it real quick basically he has his real dad who works for the state And then he had his best friend's dad, who was a business owner. He was an investor, totally different worlds, basically. And he learned from both of them. uh, And he kind of and actually, this is a great example because he put his own thought into that, which you can do that between these two books. You could you could grab, you know, part of this side and the other side. 
and do big things, uh, you know, but basically he learned from both of them and he realized that uh, his dad was just on that nine to five uh, and basically go to school, get a job. And the, on the other side, his best friend was a business owner and he saw him going basically as, as the years went by, his dad kind of died and the other guy became this great figure, um, which uh, I've also, it, this was years ago, I, I looked into it to see if uh, that was like a real story. Um, yeah. And it's like a borderline. I don't know if you ever did that. Like it's a borderline to see, was there somebody that rich in Hawaii? Oh. Uh, so it's a borderline piece. So like I didn't really find out. I mean, I out. guess it doesn't have to be a real Either person way, because yeah. the, the principles are still there. For sure. Uh -huh. But you know me with my crazy ass, I started like looking into <laughs> it and stuff. But uh, I did find uh, some some people that or, or like a person that uh, claimed to be that rich dad. And he did all these like hotels by the beach in Hawaii, oh. like all this crazy stuff. But then, like I said, there was the other side. But either way, yeah, it's a great, uh, like, as soon as I listened to that dude, it, he and he puts it so easy. That was the craziest thing. I think, I think thing. The, the, the best thing that he did in that book was when he shows the quadrants. Yeah. Because that puts it in a visual for you yep. to see, like, okay, where am I? Where do I want to be? How yep. do I get to each one? Yep. Do you remember enough to kind of talk about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So E, employee, is where you start off. Uh, then you become S, self-employed. Uh, B business where you own and he says the company has to be 500 or more. I think yes, that level is yeah. kind of, you know, but uh, if you do, that's amazing. And then the last one is I investor. And the thing is that uh, all these are taxed differently. Uh, people don't realize this. Uh, Robert's biggest thing is that uh, our biggest expense is taxes. And if you uh, obviously that's one of the biggest things. And then it's the roof over your head and, uh, but we could go down, but, uh, taxes, if you're able to learn how to keep more money that you make, then you're richer. And that's a huge thing, man. Uh, there's been times where some of the conversations I've had with, uh, maybe, uh, other, you know, people that are trying to do what I'm doing, uh, the way that I open their mind is like, okay, you work for the state of Nebraska and you make this much. Well, I made that much, but I paid less taxes and they're like, how, you know, how? And, and it's this, and obviously I'm not a CPA. I have, I have my CPA that helps me with that. What people don't realize is the government wants to partner with you. Uh, that that's the biggest thing. And especially the whole, well, what if I get audited? And it's like, actually, you know what? Yeah. That way we learn and see what we're, what we're doing wrong to take it to the next level. People are scared about getting audited and all this stuff. And it's like, but you no. know what? It's actually, uh, people are usually richer. The richer population doesn't get audited as often mm -hmm. because it's so much more expensive for the government to audit them because they have so mm -hmm. many more transactions. Yep. Yep. So actually the IRS audits more like poor people. Yeah. Yeah. Else. Yeah. So actually, if you want to stay poor because of the audit, <laughs> yeah. you're probably more more likely to get out of it. Yeah. And, and it's a partnership, you know, it's like with me and uh, the companies that I have, like we'll go with the, the investing one. It's like I'm providing housing. So that makes the government's job easier. They don't have to provide housing for everybody, you know, in, in my community, for example, because if there weren't people like us providing housing, then the government would have to figure out a way for them to do it. So they're partnering with us like, hey, can you please help us out with that? We're going to give you some tax breaks, you know, it's not because nothing's free at the end of the day. So that that's something that Robert is big on is yeah, he, taxes. He's, he talks about it's a huge incentive to get into real estate investing because of the tax benefits. Mm -hmm. And he had another book called the, How the Rich Get Richer. And oh, man. that book is essentially like, yeah. hey, here's how you avoid paying taxes legally. Yeah. Because that's how you get rich. And then, you know, he talks about I have that book where I highlighted like every yeah, single that's, I, I think I have a copy in my car. Yeah. But, um, but that's a good one. And then um, there was a, another deal that can we talk about his philosophy on credit? Because remember, do you remember the story about the how he got his first property? Go ahead. Go ahead. You sure? Yeah, go ahead. This is your book. Go ahead. All right. Well, uh, in the book, he talks about do, have you read it before? <laughs> no, <laughs> no. So, uh, yeah. So in the, in, the, in the book, I just remember that something that stuck out to me in that in that book is that he talks about when he got his first property. I believe twenty k. Yeah, I believe he took out twenty five grand or something mm -hmm. like that, or twenty grand on a credit card, mm -hmm. just so that he can get into it. <clears throat> and when he did his numbers, he was able to cash flow enough to make out with twenty five dollars a month. Mm -hmm. That's all he was cash flowing after his expenses and everything. Um, and then having to pay that credit card back, he was able to cash flow twenty five dollars a month. Which a lot of people would be like, "You're crazy for doing that." Yeah. 
But at the end of the day, if the numbers work, the numbers work. Yeah. It doesn't matter where the credit is coming from yeah. or what type of credit. I'm going to see credit cards were like 19, 20 something right, percent. Yeah, yeah. So that'd be ridiculous. Um, but we've said it all the time, you know, if the numbers work, then it doesn't matter where the money's coming from uh, or, or what your payment is. Mm -hmm. If you're cash flowing, that's what really matters. And even in some cases, if on my first property, I was actually losing like $80 a month, but I knew that after I seasoned it for the six months and I was going to refinance, mm -hmm. I was going to cash flow. Now I've been cash flowing ever yeah. since. So I was willing to lose what 80 times yeah, five or but times also six. you're building that equity too. That it, right. You know, and so it's not just the it. cash flow, mm -hmm. you know, so I lost $480 over a six month period. But I gained so much more outside of that. Now 30, 40, 50 grand. On right. Equity, so, like. you know, it's also just a, a lesson in not being so short sighted uh, when you're investing. You mm -hmm. have to look at the whole picture. Yeah. And not just that one little part, because there's so many different parts to these yep. investing things. But anyway, so. Um, Honestly, so, uh, bro, Robert, like he's man, like he's a mentor to me. He doesn't oh, yeah. Know, like, he's, know, like he's 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 he's. He's crazy, man. Like some of the stuff that I hear him say, man, and and, and he's gotten a lot of backslash because of it, oh, yeah. you know, but it's I think, literally I think the, going against the grain and building something that people aren't used to. But the biggest thing that he preaches is like, don't be afraid of debt. Yeah. Debt can be good. It can be leveraged. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. You have to have a lot of self-control, but utilize debt to make you rich. Mm -hmm. Now, on the other hand, are we, are yeah, we good with that? Go ahead. Yeah, let's go ahead. So then now, on the go other ahead. hand, you know, we were talking about... Um, the total money makeover by Dave Ramsey and Dave Ramsey is on the complete other end of that mm -hmm. spectrum. What he says is don't accumulate debt, pay everything off as quickly as you can and buy things cash. And in the total money makeover book, he talks about having a system in place. So like if you're in debt, mm -hmm. you have like the envelope system and it's been, yeah, I mean, I read that book years ago. Yeah, same here. And to be honest, like I'm not really a fan of mm -hmm. his, of his uh, mm -hmm. ideas in that sense. My thing was, I feel like I heard that or I read that book. I think I actually did the audible, whatever. But um, I feel like it was perfect timing. For yes, me. exactly. So like at the time when I read it, mm -hmm. I had massive amounts of credit card mm -hmm. debt. Um, I think it was so after my divorce, I accumulated a ton of debt just because of what happens mm -hmm. through a divorce and just kind of starting over. And I kind of let it get out of control. And I was like, OK, I need to get things in order. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I somehow came across that book. And I, I didn't do the envelope method because he, he talks about doing an envelope where you basically have an envelope for your electric bill and then an envelope for, your, I mean, he, t and he also is like, get rid of your car payment and drive yeah. just a piece of crap as long as you yeah. can. And so he, there's an envelope for, for bills and for groceries and for gas and just mm -hmm. the necessities. And I think you even give yourself like a hundred dollars or something like that for just like entertainment. Mm -hmm. But then like, but if you do that and you stay disciplined with it, you can get out of debt yeah. incredibly fast. Yeah, for sure. Cause and we like, talked about Evan. biggest thing was the snowball thing. Right. right. And so it does snowball. And uh, when Evan was on a few weeks ago, he talked about how they got out of like 90, mm -hmm. $90,000 yeah. out of debt using that yep. method. Yep. Um, so it is. In, and it's I, big start with your smallest. Uh, yeah. That was the other. Debt, start with that, the smallest because yeah. you have more of a sense of accomplishment. Mm -hmm. and, so if, and, so if, yeah, and reward yourself once you, okay, let's say you own, <laughs> three credit cards one's for 500 the other one's for 3000 and the last one's for nine grand or something i don't know but even paying that 500 first uh basically gives you that accomplishment like oh man I can which do is this. good i like how he gets into the psychology of that yeah. because it's very true yeah it is i think and then that's kind of how i handle like on my day job when i have things to do throughout mm -hmm. the day i try to prioritize okay what can i do quickly that is important if it's not important i don't mm -hmm. do it yeah but then okay because I mean, then you get that momentum Work going the momentum up. is strong yeah. you know and, and in the bigger pockets they always use the analogy of getting that train moving mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. once you it takes a lot of work to get a train moving but once it's moving that momentum keeps it going and then it's hard to stop it because yeah. of the momentum so that's really kind of what you're talking yeah. about where he gets on to that deal and i'm probably missing a lot of the book just oh yeah, we, been a long yeah time. They're, they're great but books. but the, the biggest thing the biggest difference between them is dave ramsey says don't use credit cards don't take on any type of Man, loans if you don't mind let's mortgage. start with that let's start with that let's let's uh start with credit cards how they both feel about it uh so with Robert, one of the biggest thing that stuck to me, and it's so true, and I, I want to say, dude, that uh, this video, he actually called him out. He said, like, you know, like that Ramsey guy, he's always saying, <laughs> like, I started out, I'm going to have to find it and share it with you because he called him out and he was just like, he's crazy. He's like, my credit card. So how the hell am I going to book a hotel? Mm -hmm. He's like, and, and so I, one of the things he said is if you can't handle using a credit card the way you're supposed to, then get the hell out of here. It's not it's for true. you. It's my, my teachings aren't for you is what he said. Yeah. And it's true because it's like, yeah, you book something. I mean, of course you can use a debit card and all that, but what's crazy, bro, even, and hopefully this helps somebody out there, even with my credit cards, like 
I get a certain percentage back out of my purchases. And by the time you know it in 12 months, it adds up. Like I get a nice yeah. little chunk. How do you, you know, like. Is that how you travel so much? I, I was going to make a joke. I'm like, how do you think I'm rolling down oh, the sand on the beach? On the beach? <laughs> Cause some people actually do like the airplane miles and all that, yeah. but it's, I don't know. Cash is king, man. Well, actually we're going to argue that too in this show today, <laughs> but uh, cash is better than miles for me. But uh, basically he argues that it's like, no, I need my credit card to book a flight. I need a hotel. So you just have to be grounded and be able to pay it. Like, that's what I do. I use my credit cards. I could even use them more than I do because uh, it's probably like meals and stuff. I don't really throw it in there. Uh, but basically you do that and you pay it off. It's not a problem because you, those are you're, expenses. You're, you're able to do that because you have the discipline to pay it off. Exactly. Which you wouldn't have that discipline if you didn't do something like the Dave Ramsey method. Exactly. So it's almost like everything you say, I can kind of counter it. Yeah, yeah. With how, go ahead. Yeah. That, so that's, so that's, that's my counter argument to that yeah. is that, yes, you, you're able to do that. Um, but a lot of people aren't. A lot of people think that credit cards are free money, essentially. Yeah. You know, they don't think it's free, but they're just like, oh, I'll worry about it down the road. But if you could take on the Dave Ramsey mentality and be like, no, this is something that I need to get rid of. So it's, I think it's a lot easier to pay your credit card off every month if you don't want to have credit card debt. Yeah. You know, and um, for me personally, like I don't really use credit cards uh, outside of my investing business. So like every time I buy tools, every time I, you know, uh, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I like, I just bought appliances and the HVAC mm -hmm. system on my credit card mm -hmm. because I like the points. I, yeah. I do the miles. I don't, yeah, yeah. I don't like the, the cash back. <laughs> I like the travel miles. So you're Dave Ramsey. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, yeah, but like, I like, I prefer to do the travel. Um, so I'm just like, if I'm going to, cause you know, again, like I don't use my own money for any of my stuff. Mm -hmm. I use my line of credit mm -hmm. or private money. Yeah. And so with that line of credit, it just makes sense that, okay, I will use this credit card to buy $8,000 worth of materials, or that, which I'm going to use anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to buy anyway. Yeah. Why not put it on this credit card? Yeah. But I will say, though, he like if if Dave Ramsey was here, he would tell you, no, why do you cut? His thing is cut out your credit cards. Don't oh, even have yeah, credit I know. Cards, and I get that. Which that's another thing. It's like you need a credit card to build <laughs> your credit. But he but he doesn't want you to work with credit like he wants you to buy your house cash. Right. Yeah. Which I mean, in this market, <laughs> good, luck. <laughs> good luck. But like, because you, you see the million dollar home that's all in California. Oh, I saw your post on that. Fire. That like, was like, it was that a, is crazy. Wait, up, it it, it makes million. sense. Numbers will work over there, obviously. Right. <laughs> yeah, Whoever bought it, I'm, I hope they ran numbers. They know what they're doing. It works in any mar market, but it's just crazy, like in a fire. And for us in Nebraska, I mean, you're talking, you know, a nice acreage, big old house out here. So yeah. and, and I do think if you live frugally enough and because he does say, like, you know, get a second job, get a side gig, to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, find ways to make more money to add to that cash that you're stacking for whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're trying to get. Um, to, to, you know, when I think of like purchasing because when we buy house, houses, we buy them cash, mm -hmm. you know, air mm -hmm. quotes right now, if you're not watching. But like mm -hmm. there, it's not truly cash. Like I'm not going to my bank and taking you know, 80 grand out of my checking account to pay oh, to this not? house. No, I don't. <laughs> I took it out somebody else's account. But, but even like... No, that's what I love. That's one thing I love about you is the OPM method. Oh, yeah. Which, like it's everything. Robert's, Robert's thing. Oh, like yeah. OPM, sure. other people's money. I'm even, just being... I honestly, like, I don't really agree with the Ramsey method. I'm just being devil's advocate. Oh, yeah. No, we gotta, we, gotta we have, have to, bro. <laughs> I know. I hate arguing, like, because I see both sides. Right. Like, you know, no, I, I love this. But uh, one thing I, I, I wanted to say was with the, uh, the whole mentality, you said frugal. I'm probably one of the biggest frugal dude and, and I feel like you have to be right. And that's why that's where Dave Ramsey comes in. It's like, yeah, be frugal. But then once you start listening to Robert, it's like, okay, do you want to live frugal or do you want to, cause Robert's just like, no, I want a Ferrari. So I'm going to make my investments pay for that. So, so at that point I'm like, what'd you say, Robert? Like, yeah. <laughs> but, but it's still, it's still a form of frugality because what Robert is saying is like, yes, okay, if I know that it's going to cost, I don't know what a Ferrari costs, whatever, yeah. 100 grand, let's say. Nowadays, shit. But whatever it costs, let's say he's like, okay, well, I'm going to invest in something that will bring me that type of return. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't have to change his lifestyle to get mm -hmm. that. I wouldn't say it's an asset, but mm -hmm. to buy that car, he doesn't have to change anything about his lifestyle. Mm -hmm. he just, all he has to do is invest in something. Yeah. And there have been a lot of investors that I've heard of on other podcasts that that's what they do. Like, hey, I want to buy a new truck. And it's a, what, a $400 payment. I'm gonna buy a duplex that cash flows forty yeah, dollars. Yeah, yep. Now my lifestyle doesn't have to change, change yep. because of because of this new truck. Yeah. Another thing that uh, has stuck to me that I fight a lot is the uh, the house. Right? You said Dave says buy pay off your home, have it cash. If you invest, uh, pay it off cash. Like don't have any debt. Uh, as to the other side, Rob Robert's like 
Dude, no, I'm gonna basically for one thing, the one of the craziest things he said that he's got backslash was uh, your mm -hmm. house is not an asset. And the reason why is because in America, that is probably one like most people in America, their biggest asset is their home. So for him to come out and say that, but mm -hmm. it's so true because it takes money monthly, like the insurance and it's not putting money in your pocket is his biggest thing. Well, as to where, like I said, Dave Ramsey's like, no, buy it cash. And that's your, that's one of your biggest assets, you know? And, and yeah, you know, I think it depends on, I, and I'm sure there is a, is a official definition for yeah. asset. For me, an asset is something that has value. Mm -hmm. Not, not even then, not, it has value, but it's something that you can uh, cash out some of that value without having to get rid of the property yeah. or without getting rid of that. So for example, like um, I don't ever consider a car an asset unless I'm like an Uber driver. Mm -hmm. So like if I have oh, a yeah. car payment, now my car is an asset yeah. because I'm making money off yeah. of that. And that that's what property. I was going to say. I always tell people that like uh, you said the car, I'll say even your house nowadays, especially with Airbnb. If you rent out a room or two, or or we we've had guests like Wade that he just house hacks his way into it. He doesn't pay anything on his house. Now it's not a it's not a liability. Now mm -hmm. it's an asset. Now he's putting money in his pocket. So same with the car. Yeah, if you buy a car, like and I've used this example before with my with my truck. Like it, the construction is why. So it, it's using that mentality. Like my construction's paying for that truck, so I don't have to. So that's the asset. I be I made it an asset, but if if you go over there and buy a truck like that, I mean, you're just putting yourself in debt. And 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 right. Dave if, if talks about that. It, but like, because the thing too is, is it under your business? Ah, uh, yeah. So that's the thing. It's like you know, you have for one, you need a truck with a yeah. construction business. But not just that, you're but able you know, to what, bro, write too, off everything. I, I was gonna say too, and don't overthink that. Uh, again, I'm not a CPA, but uh, I've been told by my my account that even if it is under my name, you like can it, still, yeah, yeah. So so don't overthink when you do stuff like that, you know, because yeah. I think people get caught up even. Oh, should I start an LLC? Should I? It's like just do it. You're gonna learn. You're gonna learn learn along the way what to do, what not to do, mistakes. And you know, you're right though, because I started an LLC before I even bought my first property. I mean, like when I decided I wanted to do it, I got cards made. I made up a yeah. logo. I did a website. And that's common that people yeah. do that. You overthink these things. And now, like almost three years later, I'm like, I didn't need to do any of that. Like, yeah. It really wasn't necessary. I feel yeah. like, yes, now it's it's handy to have all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Um, but to start out with that first one or two properties, I mean, the LLC isn't necessary. Yeah. Because you can, I mean, I guess depending on the state, like you can you can roll it into an LLC mm -hmm. or I don't know. Oh, yeah. The right term, but like yeah. So you, you can do stuff like that, but you don't you don't need to get into those into the weeds with that yeah, kind of yeah. stuff right away. Yeah. So. Uh, what, what, let's see. What other what other topics do they have? Um, I think the biggest thing uh, for me, the difference between them is is uh, leveraging debt. Mm -hmm. So for me, I don't see how it would be very possible. Hey, we're going to switch then. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to make a, a, a argument for a Kiyosaki method. It's hard you're, for you're me gonna... <laughs> to argue Dave Ramsey's side. <laughs> so like but for I'll me, try. Well, cause me I, I can't think of, I mean, unless you're like making just a shit ton of money, I don't see how you'd make enough cash to buy a house cash these days. Like, because of what I was getting at, I think we kind of went off track. But, but here's my thing with that. Like, wait, 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 let me, let me make the point. Let me make the point. So when we buy houses cash, it's not truly cash. So, if you don't know the process of what I do, let's say you're my private lender, because I always go with private money, mm -hmm. except for one deal, but normally. So when I go and I put an offer on a house, I don't even worry about the cash. I don't care where the money's going to come from. I say I'm going to bring cash to the table and we can close quickly and do all that crap. And then I go to you, my lender, and I'm like, hey, Billy, I need 80 grand for this house. You're like, cool, I'll give you 80 grand. You're not going to go take 80 grand out of your checking account. Mm -hmm. What you're doing is you have a line of credit mm -hmm. on your portfolio. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually just taking money out of your line of credit yeah, and you're more and, money. Right. So like when you're paying, you know, 1% or whatever it is that you're paying on the interest, because a line of credit is typically interest only until you pay it back. You're paying 1% on that money, but you're charging me one and a half, two percent You're making money on free money. And I'm getting money that I got quickly within a day or two. I didn't have to worry about any sort of inspections or appraisals. That's how we do that, guys. Mm -hmm. That's how I'm able to go and put an offer on a house. And I can tell you, I don't need an appraisal. I don't need an approval or a appraisal or an inspection is what I meant. And we don't have to wait for the bank to determine that this house is good enough to loan on. So but that see, gives this me. This is Dave Ramsey. And here's what I know. <laughs> so, so my thing was that. Like that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just yeah whatever. So so my my argument there just is you know that, my, my my argument there is you know 
unless you're making a ton of money, how are you able to even like buy a house cash without using, you know, some but sort of credit? But here's the thing. So Dave Ramsey's always like, we'll buy stuff cash. Like, and, and one thing that, they, and I don't know, it might not be him, but the same idea. One of my biggest thing is if you can't buy something cash twice, that's, then that's don't buy it. That's a Jay-Z quote. I've seen that. <laughs> yeah. Then don't buy it. Okay. So that's probably where I read it, but um, don't buy it, which is so true. Uh, you know, so even, even if like, so in Dave Ramsey, I hate putting myself in this, but if, if I'm Dave Ramsey, the way I look at that is like, no, then you probably shouldn't buy that house for 80 grand using somebody else's money. You should save up money until you can buy it. And then you, and also, I mean, at that point, you probably do have a little bit less headaches, but guess what? I, I, now I'm arguing both sides here, but uh, the nice thing about using, using other people's money is actually you get tax breaks too. So you yep. could actually write off stuff. So let's say you do keep it as a rental uh, now you're saving money on your taxes as to if you do pay it off, you're not saving money and you're going to get taxed more for for actually owning it free and clear. So and the it, reason is that because that. Your, your interest is tax deductible. Yep. The, I mean, whether it's paid off or not, you still yep. have um, uh, depreciation yep. that you yep. can take yep. off either way. But so, yeah, so there are benefits and, yeah. and, and drawbacks to each one. So. But I, I, and I think that, like I said, uh, that's a big lesson for me. And and I always, you know, even, you know, with friends, family, like when, and I love that a lot of my friends and family now, even from our podcast, bro, like they're coming to me like, Hey man, like you're putting some knowledge out there. You guys are fucking doing your thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it feels good because it's like, well, I've been trying to drill this to you guys when I started, you know, seven years ago, learning all this stuff, uh, but you didn't listen, and now I'm glad that we're getting it through. But you, <laughs> through but you also you have to be in the in the right place in your life, yeah, to be receptive right, to yeah. these things. Because and like Doug said though too that they don't have people like right now. If they ran into our show, then you know they start listening to all the other stuff. Now they're learning. They didn't even know that. And existed. I do think that like, yeah, since we're like a local small thing right now, yeah. you know, it's more like okay, because the Dave Ramsey's, the Robert Kiyosaki's, the Brandon Turner's, those guys mm -hmm. seem so big and mm -hmm. distant from anyone mm -hmm. right now. Even from then we you know, Dan Delgado's, I mean, they, yeah. the kids. Yeah, I mean. so like, but yeah, but so they have like local, <laughs> normal guys like yeah. us. You know, you you do your thing full time. I still have a day job. You know, so it's like we bring in such a different yeah, mix yeah. into that yeah, that they can actually sure. see like, okay, well, this is. Um, so this is kind of like really why we wanted to bring that up because yeah. I don't want to make it seem like Kiyosaki is yeah. or Cardone is like. <laughs> the I, we gotta do a cardone <laughs> but like uh i don't want it to make it seem like it's just like okay this is the only way to um acquire wealth um because yeah you, you can get wealthy yeah. with the dave ramsey well, method. And, and even cardone it's like uh that's a whole other monster he tells yeah. you not he, to he, buy a single a dupe a, he tells you not to buy a, a house <laughs> no he tells you not to buy he tells you to rent your, your, yeah. your which that's crazy to me we'll, we'll, we'll leave that yeah we'll have to do that but that'll like, be a good one um but one thing real quick since you brought yeah. him up uh I listen to him like all the time, mm -hmm. but he said something about uh, he doesn't buy it if, if he can't write it off or if it doesn't make him money, he doesn't buy it. And I'm like, dude, that yeah. is like <laughs> mind blowing. Yeah, yeah. And it's true. And so like I've kind of taken on that mindset now. Like yeah. I don't really like buy much anymore to, to be honest, like that isn't somehow going to be some sort of investment yeah. or part of an investment yeah. or that I can write it off on my taxes because it's kind of like non-valuable to me at that point. <laughs> yeah, so it's, no, kind of weird, it's, but. it's crazy once you change your and and I think at the end of the day, like I said, with me, it was like okay. When I listened to Dave, he was like a god at that point, right? Right. I'm yeah, like, because wow, you were like, in the right spot at that. Yeah, moment. I'm like, wow, but I have all this debt. Did blah, you get blah, out of debt? Oh yeah, yeah. And, and then after too. that, I'm like, all right, Dave, peace and out. And you know you what? Know? That's <laughs> exactly what Evan did. You know, he they yeah. got out of all that debt, and they're and, like, okay. And, and you, but the thing is, a lot of the principles he teaches, though, you, I still use. Like I said, even okay, you can't buy something mm -hmm. cash. Then you probably should, and then I. Like you I are big on buying cash. I'm kind of surprised that you still buy so much cash. Yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Uh, but I, I'm a big believer in that. It, it it's, uh, I, I, dude. Do you after, think that's that's like because of your childhood and kind of how you? I was gonna it? say, and and not just that, but even from when I started getting into debt when I was 18, and I, I'm pretty sure I said the story, and I got out of debt by 28. So it took me 10 years, and it wasn't anything crazy. I think it was like I, I don't care, like 10, 15 grand, you know, in in uh, credit card debt, and it was like I bought rims and I all this stupid stuff, right? That 
don't do, uh, just don't do this. But uh, it took me 10 whole years to get out of that. I remember, you know, times where me how and the how wife- much you, How much do you think you really paid for those rims once you paid oh them Oh my off? God, dude. I mean, let me just tell you that I sold them on Facebook Marketplace for 150, like probably a year ago and I paid, so they were like 2,000. So there were 2,000 so before your interest. Yeah, so it was probably years. like 2,500, <laughs> three grand, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just right there. So it's, it's just yeah, dumb. So it's a great and so now I look at it like, okay, now in my cars, I mean, yeah, I have rims, you know, and, and even even when I do it now, I'm, I'm being smarter than just, okay, I'm like, some of them are original. I just got them redone, right? Reglazed, like, and they look amazing. Like, and obviously now you're getting the, that it's the manufacturer's like rims and stuff. So you don't have to worry about it on the highway. I mean, there's so many things that come with just changing out rims that it's just stupid. It's a lot of money. Uh, I've literally never bought a set of rims for a car. No? No. I've, been, I've always even like- And you like, like cars, I'm surprised. I, so when I was in high school, like Fast and Furious and all that was out, and I just, I thought like, oh man, I got a body kit and under light. You thought you were and, 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 <laughs> <laughs> But I was just like, I thought like, I thought like those cars, were, I mean, I was into like all like the import tuner magazines and all that stuff. and. Um, but I've always had an appreciation for cars, yeah. but I've never really felt that like dumping money into a car yeah. was a good idea. If, not, to be honest, I never had the money to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Now that I do, I'm just like, yeah, there's no and, way. And, and that's what I was going to say. It, it's like, there's like levels. That's the thing. So like I said, Dave Ramsey got me out of that. Then uh, Robert, right, put me ahead now. Uh, he put me ahead. And and for sure, I kept some of his, Dave's teachings to, to this day. Like I said, I just if I can't buy a cash, I'm not going to. I'm not going to use a credit card. My credit card has been zero. The last time I used a credit card was on the flip that I did. You know, I bought every material yeah. I could out of that. Um, and I paid for stuff with my credit card. And even that, bro, was a headache seeing my credit card like that because I'm not used to that anymore. It became Does it, does it like thing. stress you out when you see it? Yeah, it, it's just stress like, and not to sound like that, but it's like, oh, I just want to pay it off. Like, you know, because I have the means, thank God. So it was like, okay, I just want to pay it off. But then it's like, no, but don't forget that's making you money. It's not, so it's right. good debt, you know, and that yeah. actually, that's a great concept right there. Good debt versus bad debt. And that's the thing too, with, you know, Kiyosaki knows or says mm -hmm. that there is such a thing as good debt. There is such a thing mm -hmm. as bad debt. To Ramsey, everything's bad debt. Yeah, <laughs> no matter <laughs> so, what, yeah. So yeah, so it's 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 very and, and different. I, I really do believe like, uh, at the end of the day, let me put it to you this way. The banks, if you basically play the same game that the banks do, you're going to be rich. So the concept that after reading more into this concept, it like hit me hard where basically with the banks, let's say that you go to the bank and you deposit, let's say you have 50,000 in a savings account, right? And that's your bread and butter. Like that's the, your savings. Well, guess what? There's going to be somebody like me that's going to go to the bank and be like, Hey, um, I need 50 grand to buy a house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we here, Dan, here's, your, here's your 1% every month, like yep. pennies to the dollar. Uh, here, here's your 1%. Dude, not, but, not then, even like, it's like a quarter of a percent right now. Yeah. 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 Right. It's, it's seriously. Yeah. yeah. So, but then here I am, I'm like, Oh, thank you, Dan. You know what I mean? I'm going to go buy a piece of property, flip it. Then I'm going to pay it back. You're still getting the one penny every month. Meanwhile, I just made uh, I'll just Thousands. twenty thousand. We'll <laughs> yeah. say with the fifty grand that you have in the bank. So using that concept is how I did my stuff. It's like okay, so I need to become the bank basically in the sense to where if I could build businesses that pay me for the interest of my money working, because at the end of the day, that's that's what it comes down to. Even mortgages. That's why. Robert argues that because it's true that banks are getting richer. Every time you make your mortgage payment, it, it's it's so sad that we get used to, let's say your mortgage is two grand. You get used to just like, oh, and, and in your mind, you forget that out of those two grand, nineteen ninety nine goes to the uh, bank and the one <laughs> the penny interest, goes yeah. to, yeah, the dollar goes to, to the, the principal. principal. Obviously, I'm over exaggerating, but look at your statements. You'd be yeah. surprised. But they, uh, yeah, and I think like, I remember as a kid wondering like how do banks make money you know and then as i got older i'm like damn like this is a great racket that they got going because <laughs> yeah. and i, I want to say i read something the other day and i want to say it's like for every one dollar the bank gets in deposits from their members like they make like 20 some dollars yeah. off of every dollar well, because they do that they, they flip your money and like it's to just, go along with that it like the credit card thing that i just told you about i um Let's say with my credit card, I feel bad, dude, sometimes like when I get my chunk back for that month of how much money I spent on the credit oh, card. Yeah. So I'm like, dang, like I'm paying it off. They're not making any interest. But then it hits me like, no, but then they're getting paid by Visa. 
Visa is paying them for me to use their yeah. card. You know what I mean? So it, it, at but, the end of the day, they have everything. They, and, they, they're the biggest and, asset. And we should own a bank, dude. We're, we're in the wrong business. Start a bank. <laughs> dude, like, people own banks. Yeah. <laughs> um, they do. <laughs> but you know, it's funny because like, you never think of a bank as like somebody owns that. Yeah. It's always like, it's just a did this we institution. Just, maybe, did we just start something? Like, no, next, next year, hey, we're opening our first brown minority people's, bank. Brown, brown people's bank. The, the, the Bank BB. of Brown. <laughs> no, uh. <laughs> they uh like you think of banks and they're just like this like institution it's this building it's just like this it's not like you don't ever realize that there's people behind that that there's yeah. actual people that own that bank yeah and it is kind of insane when you think about it but like again if 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 you have this mindset where mm -hmm. it's just you like function like a bank if you function that way yeah then then you actually can ever make that type yeah. of money yeah so no th this uh this has been amazing man because like i said it i've I've used both. I continue to keep the best parts. And that's the great thing. Again, don't get stuck on, should I do this or you that? Know, and like, that's, that's kind of like, you got to be a lifelong learner. Yeah. And, and you, you kind of always got to see what can I take from this mm -hmm. and that and make it help me improve myself. Mm -hmm. And so like, I still think I don't do it, but I think the, the whole envelope method is really mm -hmm. a great, yeah. a great idea that, that Ramsey has in terms of uh allocating funds or you to can things. just be robber and build some good businesses and ball out man no, no i'm just saying for your for your own like personal budget like <laughs> ball out just don't even worry like, about envelopes okay you know because like for me I know, I'm just like, dude, like i go crazy man <laughs> like you put me in the costco and i spend so much money because like oh this is such a great deal yeah, i want yeah. these and then i i look dude i'll go in with for like a pack of like vegetables or something like that and i come out with like a new jacket yeah. And like, so I'm like, oh, I need socks too. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, I kind of want that ice cream. And I'm yeah. like, like three, four hundred dollars later, I'm like, damn, like every time they get me, like every yeah. goddamn time. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I need an envelope for Costco. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like no, that type and, of stuff. And here's the thing, bro. At the end of the day that like my biggest thing now, it's a, it's such a blessing to say like, you know, you can't, it, you can go to Costco and ball out, right? Like that, that <laughs> you can, you really, <laughs> I go to Sam's I'm and ball a king out, at right? Costco. <laughs> <laughs> ball it out. <laughs> but the thing is though, that at the end of the day, it's such a blessing to say that, uh, like with me, for example, I, the last episode with Paul, like I said, like, you, you know, you see in my clothes, like I'm not over here trying to impress anybody at all. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, you know, I do like my jewelry, right? Like I do like it here and there, but I don't make that. I'd rather buy a piece of property instead of a big old chain, you know? Who's that like, rapper that got that diamond in his forehead? Man, I, jeez, <laughs> it's so crazy. <laughs> but the thing is that, uh, with me, it's like, stay humble, but you know, let's say, yeah, I do like my expensive stuff here and there. Right. But at the end of the day, it's like, you work so hard to get to where we are now that it's like, yeah, you know what ball, like, you know, the wife, I, we got her a Louis purse, you know, with, after the flip, you know, it's like, and I mean, to, and the thing is most people go and use a credit card for that. Mm -hmm. Uh, to where it's like with us it was actually a value like there was a, a value to that purse it it's wasn't just it's yeah like, it was hey, a trophy and, like and it wasn't same, just like oh i use my credit card and so like, yeah go ahead and explain because i love what you do too so and i got this from the bigger box so one of the guests on bigger box i don't mm -hmm. remember who it was but the guy was saying how every time he he finishes a flip or a deal he gives his wife like a thousand dollars like mm -hmm. he's like just like here's cash just yep, do what you want to do it. and mind you she's obviously benefiting from the money yeah. that's brought in but like this is like uh, like a quick like thank you for you know for hanging in there with yeah. me type thing and so i've done that with my flips too and um you know my wife yeah yeah it. Like, no she, and, she's, and she's ready for the next one you know what I mean? yeah like, so it's something for her to look forward to yeah. and say a thousand dollars not much but it's just right. a nice little token of like knowing you know, i appreciate extra. and I'm, like, I'm not yeah, yeah it's and a so, trophy so and, i budget and, that in there yeah I, and like i said i'm big on that bro like but here's my thing my biggest thing is traveling and food so a lot of y'all motherfuckers that are oh, I'm balling out, blah, blah, blah. Look at my chain. Look at this or, you know, my house or this or that. It's like, yeah, keep that shit to me. And, and if that makes you happy, whatever. Yeah. Right. Like we all everything. There's different things with me. It's more like, man, if I have some good food, which is a big problem because I'm trying to be healthy. But uh, food and traveling, man, like I, I'll put all my money into that because you're buying memories at the end of the day. So. Yeah. You know, instead of me wearing this, that's why I do the that's shirt. why I do the miles, not the point, not the yeah. cash back on my credit <laughs> there cards. <you> go. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, instead of me, you know, wearing this expensive shirt, I'm gonna ball out on a restaurant, you know, because that's just 
my mm -hmm. thing. So anyways, and it comes from uh, like the Robert side where it's like, no, you don't have to. I was frugal with Dave Ramsey. I, it, I didn't get where I'm at by doing that. Right? It's almost like I feel like it's almost like we ate a lot of Burger King, bro, with coupons. That, I mean, I still do, but uh, <laughs> we ate a lot of Burger King with coupons, you know, before yeah. now saying, you know what, let's spend two, three hundred at a restaurant, you right. know, like because that's what we like now. But I like I said, we don't forget that where we come from too, because there's that line, and and if you overdo it too, man, that that could be so, scary. So you went from like Burger King to bougie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's your book, dude. dude that's your book title. Burger King from to bougie. From to Jordans, bro. I have a, I have a oh, mixtape called that's from that's Chanclas better. to Jordans. All right, that's even better. So yeah, so ultimately, you know what we're, what we're getting at is that these are two different concepts, but they can work for you depending on where you're at in your life. If you want to get into investing, have your money right. I'm not saying don't be in any sort of debt because uh, I had a little bit of debt when I had started. I have my, my, my student loans. I mean, I still have those and it's not cheap, you know, yeah. and um, so I'm not going to sit there and wait to pay off eighty some thousand dollars in student loans before I start investing. Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so you have to analyze where are you in your life? Where are you in your discipline level? Mm -hmm. Because you're right. What, what Kiyosaki said, if you can't manage a credit card, then his message is not for you. So I would say, yep. you know, if you're at that level, use Dave Ramsey's method to get yourself out of that. Mm -hmm. Be patient. Once you're out of it, now you are at that level to where you can start having your money make mm -hmm. you money instead of just making getting mm -hmm. you out of debt. And what Cardone says, hey, your, your dollars have to make babies. And so that's where you get to that level. Cash flow, baby. And so, What's up with me trying to, all right, I'm going to stop. All these voice impressions. Yeah, and they don't even sound close to <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's it's essentially what, it's, what it is. And um uh, you know, hopefully people got something out of it and they can oh, yeah. kind of just maybe take a closer look at where they're at. Yeah. And I love these because even for us, like it's a great reminder, you know, yeah. to look back and our the way that we think of stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm always uh, excited to listen to the final episode of the next because you got to it's you got to keep learning, man. Like, yeah. That's that's the bottom line. And that's how we learned about these concepts was through learning. So and we also we're, we're talking about wanting to do a Q&A episode. Yeah. So we, we might have to bring it up the next few episodes. Yeah. But if you, you know, what we want to do is gather questions that people have for either us individually mm -hmm. or just a general question. But if you have questions, you know, you can put it on our YouTube, on the comments, comments. on our Instagram messages um, personally yeah if messages you want personally message if you have us on anything and as once we start ga gathering these questions we'll put them together and then we'll make a show out of it so and we'll send you a shout out uh maybe a t-shirt by the time we, cool. we, we we're gonna get some merch going here soon we have a lot of plans uh like i said even this right here don't like this was planned uh since we started this podcast that uh, we actually we didn't go as planned because we got more guests in it than, you know, we, we which is, it's been amazing. Uh, but for sure, we're going to be having a lot of uh, podcasts where it's just me and you talking yeah. about different subjects like today. So uh, either way, man, you're going to, I hope you guys are learning something out of it. And uh, yeah, send us your questions. Do you have anything else before we head out, man? No, man, I want one of these ice sparkling waters. <laughs> one, that's good. <laughs> All right, man. Make sure you guys follow us on Instagram, the that minority report podcast. Make sure you guys subscribe to our YouTube. Follow us everywhere else. The audios are available for podcasts. And let's get it, baby. Vamos. My hand to please don't say you dress in a suit, I can't relate. Minority report, can't ignore being rich, 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 report, can't report, can't ignore being rich, 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 report